All right, this is going to be a quick video about how to configure your Ubiquiti Nanostation Loco M2s as a transparent point-to-point -point wireless bridge. I'm going to go through this pretty quick. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to uh, share a link with you uh, how to do this even quicker. We have the um, configuration files already ready to go where you can just uh, download them and install them on your, on your devices. But here's how you do it. So the first thing you want to do um, is if you don't have them set at, as default, uh, you would want to download this Ubiquity Discovery tool for uh, Chrome or Brave. It's just a little Chrome app you install on your uh, web browser. Helps you find all Ubiquity devices on your network fairly quickly. Um, if these are default config units, then it's going to be 192.168.1.20. We're going to do one unit at a time. If you plug them both into your network at the same time, they're both going to have the same IP address, 192.168.1.20. They do not have DHCP turned on by default. So plug one in, it doesn't matter which one, and then uh, you can run the Ubiquity, Ubiquity Discovery tool if you're not sure what the IP address is, or if you know it, you don't really need to run this. Um, I recommend Firefox uh, for doing this because a lot of the new browsers make it more difficult to connect to um, IP addresses that have uh, private certs. So it's gonna complain because this cert isn't signed. Um, it's still encrypted, but it's just gonna complain. So Firefox actually gives you the ability to click advanced and get around it. You can accept the risks and continue. This is what it looks like if you've got a default config unit. Um, if not, you're gonna to need to know what the username and password is. If you don't remember what the username and the password is, then you're going to want to reset the unit, uh, physically reset it. There's a little reset button by the, by the ethernet jack, the RJ45 port, and you can use a paperclip to reset that. But uh, you're gonna to wanna to put in the uh, default username, which is UBNT, and the de default password is UBNT. Uh, you wanna select your country. I'm just gonna go over the United States configuration here. Uh, English should be there. Don't forget to check the box for uh, terms of use. Uh, and then uh, click login. So it's gonna come up here to the main page. First of all, there'll be a pop-up down in the bottom. Go ahead, you can click dismiss or system. We wanna be on the system tab. So just click system. If, if not, if you dismissed it, that's okay. Just click on the system tab. That'll bring us over here. We're gonna start by configuring the access point. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm just starting with the access point. Uh, Stations, units that are configured as stations connect to the units that are configured as access points. You can have multiple stations connecting to the same access point. So I would just uh, name it something to let you know this is the access point. If you have multiple um, bridges, you may want to be more specific, like where it's located um, to help keep track of it in the future. You don't think you're going to need it now but someday you might need it. It just makes your life easier later on down the road uh, when you're using the Ubiquity Discovery tool to know which one you're, you're connecting to. So um, name it, and then the next thing you wanna do is you wanna uh, set a password for UBNT. So click on that key, and then set a password, and then you're gonna wanna click uh, change. And go ahead and click apply. And then the next, after it, it saves that, and it, um, I don't know if it does a full reboot on that, but it, it's slow. Um, it's, it's writing something and, and reading it. So then you want to click on the network tab and you're going to want to um, make sure your, your mode is in bridge, uh, but you're going to want to come down and you're going to want to set your network to DHCP. This is so that um, your unit when it's plugged into the network, we'll grab an IP address from your network and it won't use the, the fallbacks. But you wanna set a, a, fall, a fallback IP address as well. Um, so that way if DHCP isn't working, you can still get into it. I set this one here to 192.168.1.21, not the 20. Um, and that's all you need to do on here. So you can go ahead and click change and then click apply. That's gonna write that. Uh, now though, Instead of going to dot two zero, when this thing reboots, it's got DHCP turned on. So it's going to get an IP address from your network. And if it can't get an IP address from your network, it's going to use the fallback. But the new fallback we set this to was uh, dot two one. So give it a little bit, 
come back over to the Ubiquity Discovery tool. You'll see whatever you named it. We named this one Access Point, so this is what it is. It got a new IP address from my network. So this is where we're going to want to go to finish up the uh, rest of this configuration is .62. So you can see up here, we go to the new IP address, and it's going to load up, and then we log in with our new uh, password that we set at the new IP address. And just you can see the device name when we log in. It's, it's changed to uh, Access Point. So we want to come over here to the wireless tab because this is where we're going to make the next changes. So we're going to want to set the drop down to access point because this is the access point that we are configuring. And we're going to want to check the box for uh, transparent bridge mode. Then for the SSID, we want to set it to something that is only used by the bridge. Nothing else will use this, just these the units that are uh, on your bridge. So set it to something you, you won't forget. Then you want to uh, make sure you set your security to WPA2. Uh, AES, and then set a uh, WPA pre-shared key also to something that you will not forget. Make sure you do something besides your different than your SSID. You don't want it to be the same. Otherwise, you just, you're just opening yourself up to trouble. So you go ahead and uh, click change down in the corner and then apply. So that's how you configure the access point. So now what you want to do is, is uh, leave it powered but disconnect it from the network. And now you wanna plug the station unit in to the network and power it up. So you're, we're basically gonna repeat the same thing. Well, since it's the, if it's the default setting, we know it's gonna be 192.168.1.20. And we just open a new tab on, uh, on Firefox, leave the uh, access point tab open. And you notice that since we've unplugged the access point from the network that the the web browser can't get to it anymore. So it's gonna say problem loading bridge. That's fine. So we uh, come down here to advanced and we proceed and then we get the login screen and then we log in. Um, we come down here to the system tab. We, we name the device, we're gonna name this one station. This is the station. We, we click the key and then we set a new password. Make it the same password that you set the other one um, to. That way you're, you're not making your life harder. Click change, click apply. That's gonna, um, of course, write that and do whatever it's gotta do. So the next we wanna come over to the network tab. You wanna set this to DHCP. Now this slide is wrong. I, uh, I changed this one to the same fallback IP address as the access point. You don't wanna do that. You can actually leave it set to uh, .20 or if you think down the road someday you're going to have an, another ubiquity device, you can set it to dot two two, dot, whatever. It's just a fallback IP address. Um, you're, you're going to have it set to DHCP, so it's going to grab a, an IP address from your network. Go ahead and click change, click apply. It's uh, going to reboot and grab a um, an IP address from your network. So come back to your ubiquity discovery tool and you go ahead and uh, click scan. Notice it's not showing up here yet. But now it showed up. Here's the station that we did, and it's got uh, .63. So go ahead and enter that in. That'll uh, let you log in there. It's set to station. So now we're going to want to go to the wireless tab. Make sure the drop down it is a station, and that the transparent bridge mode is checked. Then we want to click the select um, button here because that will bring up a little pop up where you'll be able to find uh your network because your access point is still powered it's just not plugged into the network so find the ssid that you set and there should be the name of the unit access point or whatever you named it go ahead and check that button scroll down and hit select that will then um set your ssid you can manually type that in as well um if you don't want to do it that way but this just makes it sure that you get it correct and that it actually sees the unit. Come down to the WPA2 AES dropdown. Go ahead and enter in your uh, key that you had in the other one. Click change, click apply. And that's gonna save it. It's gonna, it's gonna boot it, reboot it. Um, but once they've connected, you are going to see, so the station is still plugged into your network. So LAN port zero is still showing 100 uh, full. So it's plugged into your network. The connection is made because you can see the signal strength and your quality and your capacity. So this 
the bridge is working and is connected. Whatever you would plug into the access point now will use that wireless bridge um, to connect to your network. So you can see here we're on the station tab. So we can click on the access point tab. And we come over here, the screen looks a little bit different. The station main tab and the access point main tab are different. You get different information. But notice here that the this is the access point, but down here at the LAN zero, it's saying unplugged. There's nothing plugged into it. So whatever you plug in there, we'll use that wireless bridge to get on your network. So if you move that, so now what you wanna do is, is go deploy these things um, outside and make sure they have line of sight, keep them, um, you know, eight, at least eight feet above the ground, as high as you can get, nothing in between. The, the M2s with the uh, 2.4 gigahertz will go through some stuff, but you really need to test it um, before you uh, rely on it. It's hard to say. Um, so you just wanna test everything before you really put it in place. Otherwise you're probably gonna to have to go back up there get again, get the ladder out. Um, so anyways, that, that's a real quick uh, rundown of how you do that. Um, I got links in the description. Uh, we're running a, a sale right now on configuration files. We will get you a access point configuration file and a station configuration file. Yeah one for each of your units that have a random SSID and a uh, random WPA key set at uh, full 40 Hertz channel width, just get it all done for you. It, uh, it's quicker to upload the files than it is to uh, go through all this. If you want a, uh, a copy of these slides as well, there'll be a link in the description. All right, uh, comment down below and I'll uh, try to answer any questions that come up.